What is up, everybody? Five Nine Gaming back with episode twenty of the Dragon Ball Legends podcast today. It's under nine thousand. Today's guests are Tom. What up? We have Snowy Brad. S Snowy. Snowy, isn't that What's snowy up? still in Arizona? <laughs> no, no, it's all bright and sunny now. But yeah, it was. Uh, must be nice. Your house uh, we have the homie, <laughs> the homie Goresh. What's up, guys? We have our producer, and uh, not just for the podcast, but apparently also for music, Nasdarachi. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the fresh tunes. <laughs> <laughs> we are joined uh, by current top-ranking player, Professor Sensei. Hello, hello. And Super Saiyan 3, Rayudan, of course. That is, that's my only intro. Super Saiyan 3, Rayudan. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> hello, everyone. All right, so today's topics are, we are obviously going to talk about um, the switch of taking the energy away from the bonus battle and adding it to Let's Fight. We're going to talk about Let's Fight uh, 3, which is finally coming back permanently. Uh, we got a confirmation for the Extreme Blue second form cell Zenkai. We will have a look at that weird little V-Jump video that circulated around where um, they might hint at the next Zenkais uh, for LOE. Today we got that tweet about, hey, which Gohan would you like to fight alongside with? And uh, we are speculating a bit about the 1,000 days celebration. Before we go further, make sure to check out our link tree. I'll put the command in the chat right now. So check out all our social media and also all our creators to follow them wherever they are. Active, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, and so Don't follow on. me wherever I am, just on Twitter. No, just follow Brad on Twitter and then don't go to his YouTube at all. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, so that works. I just meant, I meant IRL. You're good. Okay, cool. <laughs> so the first topic today is talking about uh, there was a little bit of an uproar, and I think it was mostly uh, communication error, taking energy away from the bonus battles. So, for example, from uh, the super experience battle, the Zenny battle, and uh, the sta the soul stages. Tom, what do you make of that? Well, they just recently took away the energy gain if you spend basically your free energy you have in your tank. Um, usually, you were able to get like four to six energy out of 10 free energy spent. They have taken that away. They're claiming it's because of the guild points. Um, does anybody know how this eff actually affects the guild points? Okay, so the way you, you're thinking of it small scale for free to play players, but what I think Goresh and a few other people discovered inadvertently is if you sink all that energy and then instead of letting it refill on its own you pay chrono crystals to refresh it you could continue to do the event and because you're paying chrono crystals you actually gain energy infinitely you know theoretically right so what people were doing is farming just those drops over and over again to artificially inflate the guild score it's it's kind of like the same way how people would have burner accounts and have someone join the guild and earn like 2 million points, and then they'd kick the person out and keep doing it over and over again because you keep the point. You, back in the day when the guilds were newer, you would keep those points when you kicked somebody out. So it's just another way that people are exploiting to try and cheat their way to the top. Yeah. I think the main issue that, you know, obviously other than the guild thing, is this was a way for people to farm like legitimately infinite en amounts of energy like i went from like 2000 energy in my tank to maxed out 9999 energy in like a month of doing this so i don't know if that's what they intended from this because in my opinion in my mind like looking at the way they set this up initially was they probably only implemented the energy for these stages to help you farm the souls right that's like generally why they would put this there um, so their thought process, I think, was behind moving, removing the energy um, and increasing the amount of souls is instead of, you know, you having to get energy and then just keep playing the stages, they would just increase the amount of souls and remove that like middle step. So, so you get less energy um, back, but you get more for the amount you invest. So you don't yeah. need it in the first place, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And then I don't know, has anyone tried since it's the weekend now? Is the amount increased that much more because it's also boosted on the weekends now? So you get, you know, before the doubling on the weekends, does that extra like third that they added to it factor in? So you get even more, more on the weekends, I think. 
Um, it's definitely not like a crazy amount, but it's more for sure. It's it's not like oh my god, it's now double. It's like eh, it's it's noticeable, but it's not like crazy. Yeah. What what are we talking about? Like ten percent, twenty? It was like Maybe. a third. You get like a third more. So like it was six hundred. You know, a, say an average stack was five hundred. Now it will drop at like eight hundred. You get like a third more. Than I just. Used yeah, and the the soul one stage is always the worst one. I just tried it out and it dropped me like seven hundred fifteen for one drop. Then that times two because of this, it's the weekend. Normally oh, yeah, it drops you like five six hundred, so it's not that much. The, the thing I never understood with these soul stages is why would they make the um the first and last stage only give one soul while every other stage gives multiple souls? Yeah, because it's like the beginning and end of the chain. They should just loop those two together and they give each other or something. So it's like a full circle, basically. Uh, and I mean, so the last stage does give seven and six souls, but the first stages, they don't oh, give any. Is it just the first one? Yeah, the first maybe yeah. just the first one only gives one, which makes no but sense because is, it's just I mean, less souls. Yes, I, I can see how it makes sense to them because they always drop you the soul and then the one that's below that. But they maybe they should just drop drop like double the amount of souls for the first stage. Yeah, they should because there's instances where I like I, I literally have maxed out every single soul, and I was still doing the second stage over the first stage when I only needed the first stage of souls because I was still giving me the same amount. Like, <laughs> does it make any sense? Yeah, <clears throat> and then I also find myself shorter on the first souls just because they're also needed for adventures and stuff like this, you know, to upgrade them. Uh, not adventures to uh, for equipment. And uh, yeah, you just need them a little bit more frequently, I think, than they give it to you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This isn't something that I exploited at all. So there's a lot of like community outrage for it. But ultimately, <laughs> I think that there was more outrage than what warranted how much of a, an effect this actually had on like people. I agree with you. I, I think it's literally how they did it. I think it's, it's what yep. we discussed when we were over on, when we were streaming, how they put that out there. And then they were like, by the way, we're rectifying it kind of ish. Right. Yeah. I, it was just like, all right, it's gone. That's I, the worst part. It's not I, really that bad. I recorded this for Nilar's video, <clears throat> but um, just to repeat, like the perfect analogy is like, they just announced it. They announced the bad news first. Like they could have announced, "Hey, let's fight three is going to be permanent every day. We're adding energy to all three stages. Oh, by the way, we're taking it away from the super stages." Like if they had just done that, it would have been way less of an outrage because people would have been excited that, "Hey, fuck! Like let's fight three is finally available all the time." Like, and that would have eaten away a lot of the negative emotions. But what they basically did was they they're a waiter and we're at the restaurant we ordered our food they basically walked out and be like the waiter told us oh by the way we ruined your food and then the waiter just walks away and like if, if you were at a restaurant and you did that happen you'd be pissed like normally what happens with well, the right way to do it is they ruin your food they walk out and like they have a plate ready for you and they're like sorry it took so long we accidentally messed up the first time we had to start over but here's your food like you, you deliver the good news and the bad news at the same time. You don't just deliver the bad news and let people sit there, like, because that just let it fester in the community like an infected wound, and it blew way up out of proportions. And I don't even think that they thought it would be that meaningful in the first place. I don't, I don't know what. That Honestly, thing the biggest issue is just they provided no explanation. It's not even about just providing, uh, you know. A solution to what they did it's provide a reason for it because all they said was this is not going to happen anymore they should have provided the explanation as to why first so people would have understood the meaning behind it all people saw it as they took something away from me that's it yeah i think the biggest like downside to what, what happened was the fact that now people are like oh well now they're just saying this as a cover-up yeah yeah there's no way to prove it now like because because i had so many angry replies to my tweets and posts on Facebook or whatever that were like, they're only doing this in reaction to the outrage. And I tried to counter with, well, they probably had something planned from the get go. They just completely fumbled the announcement of it. But now we'll never know. Like, cause there's no way to know if this is a reactionary move or if they just poorly executed an announcement, you know, I don't know. Honestly, I, I can believe their explanation because um, I'm sure a lot of us were constantly 
tagged on how certain guilds were exploiting certain things in order to get more points during that uh, guild PvP event. And a lot of players were outraged and they asked them to do something about it. So I'm sure this is one of the avenues that they took in order to continuously farm up points. So it really just goes back to they need to improve their communication. Like if you're going to do a change that you know is going to affect your player base, at least be sure to provide the reason why so people can get it. Like I'm sure if everyone saw like, hey, people exploited this, it wasn't our original intent. We're going to take this away from here, but instead you'll be able to do this. It's essentially the same yeah. thing. And there's a little bit of bonus souls from these stages. People would have been like, all right, seems reasonable. I, you know, we were upset about this exploit because the guild PVP, thanks for the change. But because they just said, hey, we're taking this away. They're like, but what's the context? Why'd you do it? Why would you take it away? I, I just, used it for different things. I like picturing that they put the tweet up and then everybody got pissed. And like, oh, 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 why are they pissed? Why are they, why are they pissed? Like, and then they have to like rectify it. or I think you're right though. I think they already had it planned, but they're like, right, put, push that over, push that over. Tell them, tell them it's fixed. Like I like to picture that the PR guy is just like, hold on, hold on. We were, it was just not a big change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, also the thing is that it just kind of perpetuated itself when I think it's like the minority that actually used this stage to. So I remember that somebody <clears> on <throat> my stream asked me, so is there a free way to farm energy outside of the exchange shop? And I told him, yeah, if you have 10 energy in your tank, use it on the soul stage and you get like six in your tank and then you just let it recharge and you do that over. It's a slow drip, but it's, you know, something. But most people were like, oh, really? You could do that? Or even on, on some of the tweets where you're like, oh, another thing that uh, got fixed before I actually got to use it. So I think that the minority of people were even using that in any way. And that's what I think they set up, like, when you add up Let's Fight, like, 1, 2, and 3, what is it like? Is it 25 energy 20. you get per day? Or 15? 20. 20. Yeah. 20, I thought. No, yeah, it's only 20. All, isn't it 10, 10, and 20 or something for all three stages? No, I think it's 10, 5, I and thought, 20. Okay. okay. No, it's yeah, 5, 10, 5, 20. 20. Okay. Well, either way, that probably is round about what the, the free person who's not, like, paying to auto-refresh and literally farm the energy would, would have gotten from doing... It's just a weird time to make the change when you drop. We have like seven banners right now as Zenkai units, or like six or something like that. Whenever the change happened, and now they decide to do it, and it's like, bro, like this is a weird time to make this change. Like I get it, that's fine, but like maybe say, hey, you know, in a couple of days we're gonna make this change, as opposed to the night when a bunch of Zenkai banners come back. But whatever. It's also weird because there's nothing happening in the game at all right now, and it's like instead of coming up with new events, it's like they're just thinking about ways to take stuff away. <laughs> like that's what people were saying. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it wasn't a good look, but I believe basically like what we've all said, it was just purely a, a, a communication error. Like they they should have actually sat down and thought about the order of events of how to enunciate this to the community without pissing everybody off. And to be fair, they have done stuff maybe not as oopsie as this, but they've done other weird stuff before that seems like they maybe I don't know. They don't know how to communicate very well at times. Video and stuff is great, but some of the other things are just kind of weird and weird. Well, when was the last time? When was the last time we got a newsletter? Yeah, Long that's another thing. It's been a while. Last year. <clears throat> to be fair, Toshi did get on with his little two-minute newsletter or whatever, you know, for that video and stuff. Like they went out of their way to push a video and stuff that was literally like three minutes long. So it's like, all right. I mean, at least that's something. This is, this is a little update they should do those more to often. me i think we're in like uh i think we're in like a, a, a we've been in a bad spot for like a, a year now when it kind of no matter what they say there's kind of no winning so i think they're kind of at a point where they just kind of say stuff now because <laughs> no matter what they could give us positive news and people find a way to turn to negative that's just the community being that way nowadays but i yeah i mean i think we've pretty much said everything we got to say yeah, I mean, on the plus side, Ryudan, right? Yeah, we got uh, Let's Fight 3 permanently whenever that update is hitting. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice to have. i yeah, not going to lie, I kind of wish this came back when <laughs> you had to get characters to friendship level 10 in order to get yeah, the Yeah, you know, when it was relevant. It would have been nice if that came out way back then, but I, I guess better late than never. Uh, get a little bit of energy. Friendship is still important. I mean, you still get a little bit of CC, which is not bad. I mean, I'm sure they're going to do something with that system in the future because they made it. They have to do something with it. And a lot of players that still want to work towards getting that free Zenkai 1 for those characters, it'll be helpful for them. So I guess for new players, it's a thumbs up. 
no, no hurt, I guess. It's like, <sighs> yay, well, we welcome it, welcome the energy, welcome the extra stage. So there's no negative for this here. Yeah, it should have been that way, like you said, for a while. But yeah, I, I'm kind of curious what their intentions are with the friendship system. It's not something we have to waste a whole lot of time on because nobody knows. But like originally it was just for teaching Shallot super moves and then they expanded it for the Zenkais. But then that fell through and now it's just kind of in limbo other than, like you said, for just the little missions here and there. Can't I think they're going to continue the idea that uh, you can get card sleeves if you get certain characters to, uh, I think it's level, what, rank 5 friendship? Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the so LL, the LL transforming Goku would have his alt, yeah. sl alt sleeves. So I think I think they may just continue that, give you some sort of cosmetic from this. So still don't waiting they, for Piccolo's. Wait, don't they give a, a pit? It's a pitiful amount, but they give a small amount of CC when you have your friendship rank up. If you had an entire team with their friendship ranking up, you could technically convert your energy into Chrono Crystals. Yeah, I mentioned that. I said like a small sprinkle of Chrono Crystals. So. It's like two per yeah, and then there's, rank. There's some missions too. The missions tap like yeah. get fifty characters to friendship, blah blah blah. You know, shit, stuff like that too. So yeah, I think it's two crystals until level two, and then from level two onward, it's one. Yeah, and I think <gasps> it, I think it's, it's supposed to be a, a a very end of the the rope. I'm grinding CC now because I've literally done everything else. Yep. So you're just playing stage, whatever was it, six one eight or something? Yeah, you get full Z plus the friendship item and go for it. Yeah. yeah, I got one today. I'm still missing a couple, and then <laughs> some teams I have to put them on because like Yamcha has no equips for me. <laughs> All right. Um, so I think this is also not really a big of a topic. So the next thing that we got confirmed in game and that we're probably can we can probably expect that very soon is the extreme blue cell Zenkai and. His event being overhauled. Uh, Brad, what do you expect from him? Who do you hope he will buff? And yeah, what is your idea? Well, I don't want to go too in depth. I actually really have a video scheduled like the minute the podcast ends about that. Um, but uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for it actually. I looked at his stats and he's really not that bad before. Like, if you look at it, I got to pull him up real quick. Pull up his stats. I'm assuming they're on stream at the moment. Let me yeah, see. They are. Yeah, he's really not terrible. I just want to make sure I have them for reference. Um, I, I mean, he's gonna be blue. He's gonna be blue extreme, right? Like, he's gonna have to do that. But I'm hoping to do blast attack and defense, and then we get another strike attack and defense. I was kind of hoping for a different color, to be honest, instead of another blue extreme. But uh, it's it's better than nothing. I'll take it. Yeah, two hundred five, two hundred nine, one forty four, one forty five. Really not that bad of stats. So if he even gets like a twenty percent little boost, he could be solid. Plus, you look at his uh. His abilities, his unique abilities, and he's got against androids except for Cell, which kind of sucks because Revival Cell would be somebody who would be nice if you could kill him. Uh, but then 20% to Saiyans as well. If they up that to like 30% and then like 35 or keep it at 25, that could be really dangerous. They need like, to add a lot in here because this is like two, two sentences, two sentences, one sentence. So, But what I'm saying, yeah, but what I'm saying is basically anything they do just to make him a tiny bit better. It's really just his stats holding back. He's on future. He's on androids. He's on regeneration. He's on all these teams. Yeah, I mean, he might be a force to be reckoned with. Judging by how may how well they made the EX Frieza perform, I'm assuming that he's going to be pretty dangerous. He has well, some pretty big competition. I mean, like twenty one has taken the blue android slash. I agree with that. Spot. Yeah. Also, the fact I do that I agree with that one hundred percent. Also, the fact that androids doesn't really exactly need help right now. I would say, like, yeah. <laughs> I think he's a, a nice little cherry on top as a, a I'm assuming he's gonna be permanent, right? So you can just go pick this guy up. I, I, I would like to mention I'm pretty sure his green card's pretty nasty. If they make that to where it goes across the whole stage instead of being point blank, kinda how they did to freeze his paralyze, he could be pretty obnoxious for that reason alone. And then honestly the, he's gonna the he's, he's probably like tier three because of Roshi's sunglasses. That doesn't affect them at all. Well, yeah, all the Roshi characters are clearly not <laughs> Roshi would absolutely destroy this guy. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, he's been flat. <laughs> At first, I was, sit I was sitting here, I was like, hold on, wait, what do you mean Roshi? The, the new blue one? And then I was like, oh my, the new blue purple one. Uh, he never left the meta with that crit buff? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I have the first one Frieza pulled up right now. He has 275k blast attack for me. What do you think they're gonna do with with this guy? Yeah, he's yeah I mean, I, right he now. looks. He's really even. He's really even across the board. I like it. I mean, if they even 245 on both blast and strike, 
and then you just hold two blast cards, he could be solid. Keep in mind that this guy did actually get a balance update way back in the day, so his stats are actually buffed already. So what's the freezer, right? That's true. Yeah, the freezer was as well. That's correct. Well, those two units both feed into each other. I, I think neither one of their ability well, Freeze's abilities don't care about you being LOE. He just kind of gives buffs, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that you could run these two together because he, he this uh, cell buffs directly, you know, blue, blue EX. EX, EX, yep. And so like that that could be a, a cheap alternative for someone picking up the game, making a blue, blue, purple team. And it could be a good one too. Just need uh there's no extreme purple Zenkai yet, right? No, I know um, that I think Yeah, of. no, I we just have yellow, blue, and red. Yeah, so we're missing green and purple. It is. What is it? Third yeah. form Frieza? Oh, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, isn't that the only one in the game? Like, can we get a sparking yeah. version too? It is the only one in the game. It's like a most hated form from Frieza or something. Well, I love like it. He looks alien. like a toad monster. No, he's well, like looks a like xenomorph. He's a xenomorph, yeah. That's what it's based on. Definitely around. the ugliest form. <clears throat> But then again, the second hey. form, I don't know. I don't know. What's no, that, no. Tom? No, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think also... the I think the first form cell would have been a better option. Like this, uh, the yellow one there. Just ah, uh, the We already have a yellow, right? though. Well, we already have yeah, the HP buffer would be nice, too. Yeah, but we already have a yellow. Well, we don't, don't, we don't even a have option. a good second cell. Like, um, I, I'm, I'm happy just because, you know, if you're True. a cell fan, this is this is your man right now. Oh yeah, because the, the the first form cell we have is really good. Well, okay, so this is probably the sparking your one. Cell. If you can keep them on the field for like what is it, eight, ten timer counts, you're gonna you're gonna do some punishment. But it's like two <laughs> eight, people out there that are actually trying to do it. I'm surprised that for as old as Legends is, that we don't actually have like a traditional transforming version of Cell yet. For like how in, like impactful of a villain he is, like. There is no transformation. Bro, he didn't need a traditional one. He has the most overpowered transformation in the game. Yeah, but that's not like... I mean, it's not even really a transformation, so to speak, because his actual character model doesn't even really change. Like, I'm talking about, like, first form to second stage, or second stage to perfect, you know. It's or, probably just because it, it, those require him eating someone, and they're they're probably like, well, how the hell do we, you know, how do we, you press the main 17, 18, just show up and eat some? Like, they're pro they probably were just like, eh. As opposed well, to having to do it like uh, Budokai that. does, where you transform, he like flies off screen and absorbs someone. <laughs> Maybe they could do or, that. Or no, you got like, You land a killing blow. Transmissions back, yeah, just to keep it short. Honestly, the only way I can see this guy being really, really valuable is if he does exact. Wait a minute, I think that's actually what you guys said, where he performs just like the EX Senkai Seven Frieza, where he's just providing passive buffs so long as he's alive for his tag, because he's got some fierce competition. It's, it's going to take quite a bit of work for him to be like, oh my god, all my energy, I should throw it for him, you know? Yeah, well, for regeneration, this could probably set you up with some type of I'm, purple setup. I think it's just future, personally. I mean, I'm probably just only going to run him on future, because, yeah, I mean, Android 21 has it on lock on girls and androids, at least in my opinion. He's got to be ridiculous like to really take her spot. And also, he's not going to be, but I mean, future, it's nice to have it. You say yeah, that, you don't have then that trunks? blue EX Frieza kills people in like two blast cards. If they do anything similar to him, people are just going to be like, oh, maybe I don't need Android 20. It's true. Yeah, like I I don't know why it even slipped my mind, but yeah, on the future squad with the new trunks that came out, that might actually be a pretty gnarly combo. Yeah. yeah I don't see it. really intimidating. I mean, look at the art. Good. Those lips, man. Those <laughs> lips. Purple Vegeta, bro. Blah, 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 blah. This is what lips feel like. <laughs> just, I know. I couldn't really never take this cell seriously because of how goofy his voice in the dub sounded, which of course is what I watched when I was like nine years old growing up. There was no subbed available back then. You don't have to excuse yourself. This whole dub and sub thing, man. Truth's all about that. Dude, too. like hundred yeah. percent of the people here all, all grew up with the dub. So yeah. So, what about the shoop the whoop yeah. meme? They made his voice sound like. Literally, like he has no nose, like Krillin, but they actually made it sound that way for the cell, unlike Krillin as much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now here we only had the German dub, okay? So it's not even that we can, Tom and I can't even relate. <laughs> what was that thing? Right, and just showed up and messages the other day. I was like, oh, you stole your nose. Well, that happened to cell. One can tell. <laughs> well, at least he has a nose to bacteria now. Yeah. That's, you know, that's a real concern. 
And I think there's not that much that we know about this blue cell. So um, we have more speculation coming up. Uh, the next topic is definitely one that Goresh is going to love to talk about. Um, there is this video on the VJump channel and uh, yeah, you can already see highlighted only had like 700 views at the time uh, Nas took the screenshot. And uh, yeah, we are now speculating about potential Zenkais for LOE. Goresh, what is your take on that? Yeah, so there's a few things we can mention here. The first thing is that the only reason why people are really speculating and looking into this heavily is because of the last um, sort of like show match that Toshi had. Uh, that was back during V Jump, or not V Jump, the um, Jump Festa, where he was using God Vegeta, Piccolo, and the Blue Trunks, who all have, obviously all got Zenkai. The one thing I'll note about that team is that that team is not a team, and it's just random units thrown together, whereas this is an actual team. So I would say that there's less direct merit in this team being speculated to get a Zenkai. But I will say, if you're looking at his team, there's like one unit that jumps out that probably deserves one more than anything else, and that's Yellow Frieza. So I think Yellow Frieza probably has a very high chance of getting one pretty soon. Red Metal Cooler is also another option. I mean, he's not never really used, so you know, if, to get him back into the meta, I think is is fine. LF Frieza. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm probably not anticipating him getting his Zenkai anytime soon, just because I don't think he needs one. Piccolo was a unit that yeah released at the same time as LF Frieza, but Piccolo was never used ever. He, he never had a time where he was like even remotely used. And I would argue that these, uh, this LF Frieza, even today, is like, if you're picking LOE, like he's one of the first things you look at and, and, want to, it, to, if, and you consider to include in your team, right? So um, Piccolo has a lot more competition with the regen tag being like three times as big as the LOE tag. Um, and something else, too, is that people have to understand that not every single thing that they do is always a hint at something. Remember when the Twitter was tweeting out all those pictures of IT Goku? And everyone was like, oh, he's definitely getting a Zenkai. It's confirmed. And then he just never got one. So, Yeah. I tend to agree um, with pretty much everything you said. And that's kind of how I want it. To. I don't want LF Frieza to get one yet because I don't even have him like at all. So, yeah, I think that what he said is pretty accurate right there. I mean, they do like to tease little stuff. And the yellow Frieza, like you said, like... He's so terrible. Like, he doesn't even fit on his own ta tag because his Z ability is just terrible. Um, and he's been fully replaced by the full power final form Frieza. So, yep. Well, yeah, I, the only thing I will say about this yellow Frieza, though, just, just, just real quick, is that the thing that turns me off a lot about him is his Z ability is awful. It's both defenses for yellow. So, if you want to run him on even Frieza Force or LOE, there's not really another good yellow option you could use other than full power Frieza, who has really fallen off recently. So it's pretty much a useless Z ability for the team. Do you think he could be the first ever Zenkai that changes his Z ability, or is it always going to be monocolor? Because they have yet to Zenkai a monocolor sparking, right? Yeah, they have. No, I don't think they have ever done that, and I think there's a chance they actually will change it. Because keep in mind, the only reason why his Z ability is like that is because he was released before the Lineage Evil tag existed. The Lineage Evil tag yeah. released with Chilled, who came out obviously after this guy. So that's the reason why he has that Z okay. ability, which is really bad. This Frieza was on what, like the third banner in the game ever, or something like that. Or yeah, so the, the banner was uh, the UST banner was with Goku, Pan, Piccolo, and Vegeta. Then it was Blue Broly. Then it was the Frieza banner. I think the Frieza banner was like what is it, like Advent of the Emperor or something. Advent of Evil or Advent of yeah. something like that. Yeah, it was. It wasn't even one of the named themed banners like in the game. It was just some random one off name they've never reused. Yeah, so then that's like what they had with like the Super Vegeta and Super Trunks too. They used to have those weird banners like that. Do you speculate him being like formidable? Because I mean, the yellow spot for LOE, I mean, full power does a really good job. Like, he just complements so well with LF Frieza. Like, what could this guy possibly do to be like, I'm taking that spot away from you? Well, the green uh, telekinesis. Yeah, just a lot more damage. And just like, honestly, he's probably going to, even if he, even though he doesn't have endurance, he's probably going to be way more tanky than full power. Because <laughs> full power is honestly at this point kind of squishy. So that's like the main reason why he's not as used as much is because, you know, you can remove his cover cut, 
you could nullify his endurance. There's so many units that do that this, in this day and age. So as long as this freezer just gets a huge stat buff, which he will. Keep in mind, this freezer also was balance adjusted as well. So you know, he already has okay stats. Um, this guy can be really good. He has an ultimate. The ultimate already does massive damage. His green card is already pretty pretty good. So he has like an okay base for what he can be. It just depends on how they handle his really bad unique abilities. Because his unique abilities are like very specific. It's like, oh, extra damage to Saiyans, extra damage to Frieza Force. So uh, it'll depend on what they do there. Yeah, that must Doesn't be he bring? Ability. Doesn't he bring two blast cards? Uh, he might. Yeah, that's like the way they yeah, balance. That was old. Yeah, they, this is that weird period where they gave like strike unit, bring two blast, and all this other stuff. So that is that kind of a negative for him. He is a strike oriented unit. No, he doesn't. He holds one blast, one strike. I just checked. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, they could give him the eighteen treatment time. where his Z ability or Zenkai ability don't quite mesh up, but the unit has an overwhelmingly good kit. Yeah, they could do that too. Um, I am still, still, frankly, they seem like about every three months to be dropping a Legends Limited Zenkai. If you think about the only two Zenkais that come to mind that are actually just not good anymore would be the Purple Goten and Super Saiyan 3 Goku. I, I know this freeze is still usable, but the LOE team just does not hold their own anymore. I mean, they're good. An experienced player can definitely win with them, but I, I'm looking forward to, in fact, hoping for this Frieza to get the Zenkai. The, the final form, not final form, the the Legends Limited one. I think. Uh, I think that'd be healthy. I'm sorry, I got tongue tied there. Yeah. The only thing. I'll, the only thing you could say about him, <clears throat> maybe uh, not warranting one right now, is the fact that he's always going to be relevant because he always holds a blue card, which is like, you know, what what other unit in the game does that besides Hercule and Blue and the not Blue Bulma, the Bunny Bulma? I think that's it, right? Yeah. Um. So in that just... way, he's always going to be relevant, but. Yeah, I would argue that they probably do need the help, but like, uh, if, the longer they wait, the better he's going to be when he gets one eventually, right? They could also be throwing us a curveball here. Like, yeah, the, with this team, this hint, one of these units gets a Zenkai, but it also could just be hinting at the broader fact that they're planning on focusing on LOE soon and that we're going to be getting new LOE units, right? Maybe they're using yeah. the hint in another way. You know, there's nothing. I think, I think LOE is one Zenkai and one new unit away from being a top tier team, because they already have like a solid foundation for their team. Like, we'll, we'll open the tag real quick. Red Freeze is really good. Chilled, but as long as it's not chilled. Yeah, I don't, I don't foresee chilled that we're getting a Zenkai. <laughs> like Red Freeze <laughs> is really good. LF Freeze is really good. Still, well, not really good, but he's he's good enough. Obviously, Zenkai Cooler is really good. You got the Green Metal Cooler. You have the Zenkai First Form Frieza. So, like, they have a good foundation. Purple Cooler is still usable, obviously. So, you know, one Zenkai and one new unit, and you're looking at a roster of six really usable, good LOE units that you can actually bring into any match. So, like, the depth and, I guess, usability of every unit on the team is what makes the team good. Because I remember back in the day, you had six units that you could bring into any match. So nobody really knew and said, oh, okay, well, he's definitely bringing these three. Like, that was one of the advantages of using that team. Yeah, I think like green gold I think what would be terrifying if they actually did Zenkai, the Ella Frieza, is they're probably going to throw his Awakened Platinum equipment at the same time, just like Namek Goku. So, I mean, his equipment is already amazing. Yeah. Well, it's they didn't do it for Piccolo, though. What's that? They didn't do it for Piccolo, and he just got his Awakened no, his awaken, his Platinum item. Yeah, but I mean, Frieza's had his first. That's why I just assume. Yeah, Piccolo had his before the patch too, though. And he had no, his I for mean, a minute. Frieza, I'm pretty sure Frieza got his platinum equipment and then Piccolo had his afterwards. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah. So I don't know. It could not happen at all. I mean, I, I don't think Frieza needs Zenkai at all, but well, I, who knows I think, what they could do? I think if they uh, hold off on the platinum awakening, w they can use that as another buff going down the road. Like if they Zenkai a unit. And then they give their Platinum Awaken after the fact. It's a way of catching them up after they start to fall off. So I, I'd, I'd prefer them to give him a little bit more love on the kit and then uh, supplement it later on the Plat Awakening. I just hate the equipment like re-rolling an Awakening period, so I don't really have much to add there. I hate it with a passion. <clears throat> well, you, you don't like spending 99 Erasers to get nothing? Yeah. 
I, I never even have 99 racers, but I've gone in like 50 on one thing, and then it's also like, oh, you're consuming like 100 million zenny every time you reroll now. <laughs> just like, okay. Just, just, that's like literally going to like the auto parts store and being like, put a, put a new race car motor in my car. And they like take your motor out, charge you a million, hundred million dollars, and then they give you a Prius motor in there. Like, here's your car. Like, you just downgraded me and took my money. Like, yep, thanks. You want to try again? Like, no. <laughs> try again. Yeah, it's random. Yeah. You might end up with a go kart motor next time. We don't know. We got we got a mystery box for you. What the hell? Yo, I, I'm, I'm, I ain't joking. The erasers and going for items, that gets me way more hype than summons. No. Like I, they, they know that they, they, that that's that's part of rerolling. It's just the the same kind of hype, and you line up, you know, ten items in a row, and you hit that summit. I mean, Gresham is what I'm talking about. You upgrade them row, and you see a couple of Z's pop up. Feels good. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I may, I can't speak for anyone but myself, but no, I do not feel that at all. It does not cause a little twinkle in my heart or eye. I don't. I'm just like, oh, this is annoying. I hate doing this. The only thing about equipment is that once you get one, you have it forever. Whereas if you get a unit, unless until they get a Zenkai, they're eventually going to get power crept. Yeah, you, until the equipment gets an awakening and you have to re-roll to, for the first slot to be good all over again. That's, that's that their sucks. way of doing that. That is so annoying, dude. I, I, I remember I legit spent already over 100 of those Ginyu Force equips like now and way back then. I have not gotten a single yellow first slot yet. <laughs> Those Those are are just like, even if you know, like you you spend a while to also build up good equips, and then they get an awakening, and you know, okay, now, now I can just throw all of those in the trash because they're yep. gonna come out e. Cool. Yeah, it's it could be somewhat alleviated with two two things that we've recommended like multiple times already, which is a a method to reroll the first slot somehow, like for the awakened equipment specifically, right? Because obviously they want a reason for you to have an energy sink and to play the game grinding out the initial version of the equipment. But the awakened version should probably have a way for you to reroll the first slot at the very least. And then also yep. like some type of gold <clears throat> eraser that even marginally by 0.1% guarantees you a better roll as opposed to one that's going to backslide you. I think yeah. awakened equipment should have better stats in general or better chances for good stats. Agreed. Yeah, and then also there are some of those equips, like I think you'll pay is one of those, which were, um, or the fusion ones, I don't remember, were some, you know, first of all, it's like Saiyan, and then once you awaken it, it's like Saiyan Red or something like this. Yeah. Or you even yeah. have to rem think about, hey, is that even worth upgrading? Because now it's much less useful, or, you know, you can only use it to like one or two characters or, um, of your team and not to five. The only real issue I have with awakened equipment is the fact that you're you have a finite amount of resources and a finite amount of times you can create those because yeah. of the amount of points you rush get from levels. the rush yeah so like there's been times where i've spent like i remember for that loe one i literally spent like what was it, like three hundred thousand rush medals and i didn't get a single first slot gold yeah that sucks <laughs> so like what am i supposed to do it's just it's finite like i can't just keep going <laughs> It's just they it, it can't do anything about it. It's, just, it's RNG. Yeah, you also need you know also a lot of people use those rush medals for Zenkai souls. I mean, there are a few other avenues, but they're not as easy to get, yep. or not you know you don't ha not as abundant. Like for example, these uh, soul coins or whatever they were called that we got. Maybe they should give out more of these, or you know they they make them a little bit cheaper from the adventure, something like this. Because yeah, rush medals all of a sudden they're you know becoming more and more sought after. Use for the the Z awakening power for your LL units too, like twenty or thirty thousand. You need that's true. Do that too, Greg. Something else for the awakening system. I don't know if this is like conspiracy theory territory or not, but like, wouldn't it also be good to suggest that all of the equipments, like all the silvers, all the golds, all the platinums, have the same weight on rerolling? Like, does it seems to me like certain pieces of equipment they just weight the slots way more than others so like when i say it's, i mean that like they they don't roll as easily as other no. pieces of equipment why is that a, not just consistent across for all it's definitely them? it's definitely an equip by equip basis like they're definitely not all the same weighting 
Like that that for third form Frieza equip does not have the same weight as like any. We other always equip. we always go back to that. What it shows. <laughs> wow. No, Dude, no. This one, but also the I'll send you back to hell. I think the one with Veku on it. Uh, I just tried <laughs> awakening one of those today, and I, I had a hard time even getting enough Ace to use for the awakening. Yeah. And then and then something that never really happens to me before was that I got a bunch of Cs after using all three slots. I was like, huh? <laughs> Wait, wait, you guys aren't even bringing up the best one. Yeah? There's a few items that if you awaken them, the first slot of the item is one or another stat. Oh, so not sick. only will you farm a C gold slot of this item, you have a 50% chance of just getting screwed. Yeah. So like Strike they're even weapons. harder. And I I know we complain about this and they uh I, I'm I'm hopeful that they will change it because any anybody that's year one remembers the old system was like you you had to get specific items in the other slots, not just the main awakening item, but like all three items were very unique items. So awakening was an absolute pain in the rear. So I, I I'm hopeful that they're they're going to make some positive changes. But you know, I I personally feel like the this angst that you guys are having, as long as it's not painful of a process to do, getting the high rolls are it's exciting. Uh, maybe I, I'm just in the vast minority here, but it's really fun pulling a Z, especially if you don't usually pull them. And I feel like you're going to be taking that away if you make it really easy for people to just use a guaranteed item to give them a Z or a Z plus. Like when you see someone in PvP and they got full Z or something, you're like, holy crap, right? That 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 moment is gone now if you make it to where everybody gets the item. Well, that's the natural progression of power creep over time anyway. So I was like, you saw that LL character and you were like, Holy crap, but now it's just, oh, I have some Zenkai version that's better. I'm going to crap stomp him. <clears throat> but it, I, I, I didn't say it has to be like you use the golden item and you just get instant Z. I'm just saying, like, again, gold eraser just at least guarantees like point one. Like, it just guarantees it has to go up, but not by how much. Like, it just guarantees it can't go down, basically. If I can, if I can re-roll the first slot of an Awakened Equip, I'm happy. That's it. That's all I need. I don't I, that I think that would be okay because I I how many instances have we been through where you use all your rush medals trying to get one awakened equip and you're down to none because you didn't get one good roll and then so many things rely on those rush medals like Koresh said that it's like it, it, there's only so much you can do and it seems a little bit you know because the resource is finite you're like well sorry equip I guess I can't roll you well maybe when the equipment launches they could have an event right where you can you can get a hold of the C's easier during the first week that the item's in the game. Some some way to where you're using your rush medals to not get it as screwed over. But I, I know what you're talking about. I just I don't see where they can draw the line other than making sure that that first slot is easier to get, or if there was like a pity system of being able to feed other items of the exact rarity into that if it'll work or or something, you know. But it definitely feels like it's supposed to be a resource sink, not something that you just kind of get. Because like full S, you can get in an afternoon. That's no problem. But getting a hold of the ZZ Plus, it, it starts consuming everything in your bank. Your Z medals, all of it start disappearing. Erasers, I, I, I would rather the resource sink, though, be not be rush medals. Like if they make it so you can reroll that first slot, then it's erasers. Then it's, you know, CC if you really care for it, which I would prefer those be spent for that should, than be having to waste all the rush medals for a good roll. Just it just dawned on me. That then. stuff to the equipment metal, like, you know, those little copper coin looking equipment metals. I should just add the all the resources you need for equipment to that shop and you can just use those metals to get it. Yeah, that and the the Z metal shop you get after you 14 star a unit. Like if, if we could start sinking those into blueprints and base items for upgrades, that would be fantastic. I'd run out of Z metals tomorrow. Oh, yeah, please let me use my Z metals. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like the like, only thing that the Z metals are useful for right now are the black adventure keys, right? Well, no, like you, you, farm, you farm items with them too. Because what you ultimately do oh, is you buy 30 at a time and you only upgrade the reds and that's how you get Z+. plus. Yeah, and from the Z metals, there's just a PvP equipment. There's right? a few items in there that are still very valuable. That are Zenkai 100%. souls. Ooh. Yeah, Zenkai souls for if you go after every single Zenkai. But... Well, yeah, but you also have a, if you have a lot of Z metals, that's probably what you're doing too, right? I'm going for items. I think the uh, I could be wrong, but isn't the rival universe item in there that gives the HP? Yeah, I mean, I already have every single item in there as a Z, so... 
Well, did you get the Z plus though? Because legit, the <laughs> no. no, no, no. What you do is you you keep hitting that thirty button, and you will see a perfect red slot drop. Lock it. Collect no, twenty of those, and then you'll get Z plus that afternoon. And then it looks extra spicy. That that Dragon Ball Saga equip that drops from PvP. I got I got a perfect first roll on that one. That must be nice. Ten out of ten. I think I have a close to one, but not the perfect one. Uh, Prof, I have a question for you. I'm right which, here. Of these, which of these Gohans would you rather fight alongside with? Oh man, <laughs> there, there's one right there in the center. Oh, stop. The balanced one? Um, no, real talk. Is so a lot of people are speculating these being Zenkais. And I, I've gotten a lot of messages about these being Zenkais. Um, well, that one on the far right, the new future Nubhan, is not going to get it. I would be uh, just a jog ass. No way. But we're talking going to get it. He's going to get it. Clearly, yeah. before he even gets a plat or anything, he's getting this thing. Before the banner um, goes away, yeah, he needs it. Oh man, that that's probably what's going to sell him. But uh, <laughs> the uh, purple great Saiyaman is all but confirmed. I believe uh, Gresh can confirm this, but they said that they're going to be doing them in order, and I believe he came after Go Tanks. Yeah, he yeah. Did. So he's already confirmed to be a Zenkai wait, wait. in the future. Was it was it him next, or was it Yardrak Goku next? I forget. Pretty sure it's Great Saiyaman then Yardrak Goku. Saiyaman. Um. And then uh, we already have the Zenkai for one in the center. And then we, we're left with these two boys in the front. Now, I don't believe Kid Gohan will ever get a Zenkai, no matter how much I want it, because he's an HP buff on his bench. And he's already kind of a must-have if you're running him on hybrids. But this would pretty much just lock him in permanently. He's, he's got plenty of value, I'm sure, as far as the game is concerned, in his spot already. And then that leaves us the one in the, you know, the Super Saiyan transforming Gohan. Now, it would fit with today's meta. They're pushing a lot <laughs> no. of, uh, I oh, know you're God. saying no, but hear me out. They're pushing movies and they're pushing hybrids. And he's the bridge between future and hybrid. And he's the bridge between hybrids and movies. I, I could legitimately see them Zenkaiing him as sadistic as that would be. Um, but I, I don't think any one of them is getting a Zenkai in the near future. But uh, if it's most likely, it would be the one, uh, the second on the list. I think I think they're going to be very, very cautious about Zenkai any unit that has a lock in. That's yeah, why I think we don't see Bardock have a Zenkai at all either, because nor have we ever seen another unit have this form of locking in. Because I think they realize it is stupid OP. Lock in is now based off of like when you use an ultimate or very strict conditions like Bardock after transforming. So I don't, I don't think he's going to see a Zenkai for a very, very, very long time. Cause it'd be stupid. His, his stats yeah, right now are still OP. His stats are there, but he has none of the multipliers that the modern unit has. We have boo. What? Zenkai boo. Five yeah, seconds. Boo. Like five um, seconds. Yeah, but that's not 10 timer counts. I think, I think they they I don't even think it's OP as much as it, as it is just not fun. Like nobody enjoys getting locked in for 10 counts and just being able to just get comboed and not have, they just, that locking for 10 like that sort of ability where you know Bardock has that Ribrian has that this Gohan has the locking for 10 counts thing has zero counterplay. The you actually time, just can't do anything. The only time I will say it is good for that long, 10 counts, is when it's like the purple EX Guinea, where you also lock yourself into like a one-on-one -on -one death match. Well, hear me out, hear me out. If they Zenkai him, though, we can run the triple Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Zenkai team. Yeah, that sounds yeah. You pitched right. that like that's a good thing. Nobody wants that. That's why I have a cancer green right card. Here. Yeah, that's I why know. this character is so... Like, it's just a menace. Yeah, it's the green card and the lock together. What makes it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, so it's actually just brain dead incarnate. And instant summoning on blue card two seconds after he locks you with the key to use it. Yeah. That's, that's Why awesome. do they make Honestly, all the Super Saiyan two Gohan so brain dead? Hey, I'm right here, man. <laughs> I mean, Wait, you can you admit it. Two Gohan? <laughs> no, I, I, I do say they don't have interesting kits. Like this new future Nub Han has. A super fun kit. UI Goku has a super fun kit. Even Broly trying to get your opponent to swap out has a super fun kit. Yeah, the, none of the Gohans have an interesting kit, though. As much as you guys say it's brain dead, it is really satisfying getting that green card off and comboing 100 to 0. That's, oh my God, so that's a, that's That's, that's <laughs> a very terrifying thing to say. It it's is so satisfying. satisfying to one combo you. everybody. Well, I mean, I, call, I lock you in and pummel you to death. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, like I said, I reply to the tweet with none just because I don't personally like using the Gohans. Like the new one is fine, like Professor just said, but all this pre like I've seen enough. Like I'm tired of Gohan. Like get out of here. I would like, rather. I would rather Bojack get the Zenkai just so people feel more of a need to use Gogeta Blue. I would be okay or, with Bojack uh, more than this Gohan, hundred percent. Bojack actually needs mostly a defensive buff, so if his Zenkai was focused around that, then he would be functional again. I think if you asked me, like, what are my top five least wanted Zenkais, this Gohan would be like number two or one. With the yellow one? Yeah. Yeah. He really doesn't. Like IT that. in first place? Yeah, which one? Yeah, which, probably. Yeah, think? I think it goes up there. Like uh, stupid stuff. Like I don't know. Maybe Vader or Hercule know. would be up there. I want. I want Sparking Hercule Zenkai. Yeah. He makes your blue cards free. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Purple Broly's probably up there too. Purple Broly is that really that much worse than this blue Broly that's already going around getting his vanish yes. restored yeah, and red, red Zamasu? Red Zamasu, <laughs> nah, that's just endurance. We didn't really have real answers to endurance during his endurance. heyday. His like Mondo healing, super ultra tanking, the endurance and regeneration. That's that was more the worst part. Or future now, even at this point. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> I guess you know what this is. Yeah, I, I figure I'll I'll throw one little sprinkle. I did see a comment where somebody said, "Note how there's no ultimate Gohan shown here." Yeah, where's, <laughs> where's ultimate? So where's the, where's the poor green one? one? He's still really good, huh? though. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's all because of his IT, his like cover save, and that's it. That's the only thing. <laughs> no, yeah, but I just I remember seeing that comment. I'm like, ah, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of reading into it, but. Yeah, uh, eh, so I don't know. Arrow and squeezed another one in here. Poor old like, it, Gohan. Like, like, like I was saying though, there, if if there, we could read into this, but I don't think you want any of those things to happen. None of those Zenkais. Like, great Saiyan will come down the road when the LR team starts to fall again. But I, I, I love hybrids. It is not their time. I mean. I've joked on my stream like if you give me like purple goat and zinkai it's just going to be absurdities and because people keep saying it's going to be goats and or super saiyan 3 getting the next uh legends limited zinkai well, like i agree with that like, it's good. gonna happen sooner or later they, they might as well just make the plunge at some point so you might, you yeah might let, let's start with super saiyan 3 let's just do that now let's get it over with people will burn a little bit but well you know once we're over that hump it'll be it's perfect that's yeah, so because right? our Everyone saiyan agree? overlords <laughs> that's what we need like, if yeah, let's him they can use him to experiment with a balanced Zenkai. Stop, stop. No, ignore that. <laughs> let's just. Oh, man, that would be a right step. You are direction. finished. Let's, Look at all these blue units. You, you might be onto something because, I mean, there's exactly. a ton of blue units. See, He's bro? a green unit, but we don't want the wave, community man. with another Zenkai, so he'll be immediate bench for the new green unit that's about to come out. It feels like the pace of things has maybe somewhat accelerated a little bit over time, so. I wouldn't expect Maybe. some of these things to actually start happening that we're like, oh, it'll happen in the future. I guess well, uh, we'll wait and see, huh? We've Was also hit a point where a lot of teams have three to four Zenkais on them. Like it, beforehand, when teams are starting to get two to three Zenkais, it was just absolutely overwhelming. But now it's like God, Key, Saiyans, Hybrids, Androids, Reach, and they all have Zenkais on the yeah. core lineup. And Except GT. So, <laughs> GT also, will forever be in the gutters. We've also <laughs> gotten to the point where any Legends Limited they pick now, like of, of, all, of the pool of remaining options, any single one of them they pick to Zenkai is going to be overwhelming for whatever team they walk into like well yeah so we've set a standard in now when one drops like piccolo like if you dropped piccolo back in vegeta blues meta he would have been popping heads left and right but they dropped him during this meta where we already have things of his value in higher and so if if they do decide to go with super saiyan 3 goku it, it wouldn't be that crazy it would just be kind of obnoxious that we're seeing even more saiyans but it would be that crazy well, yeah. like out of everyone out of all of them, like I don't know if they're they, they're following a mandatory schedule. They just feel like I, it has to happen. We got to do it every two, three months. Like out of all the ones that are left, which one would be the the, the least poisonous? To be honest, 
it's a hard choice between Super Saiyan 3 and LF Frieza, let's be honest here. Or Super Vegito it's... or Go. No, Super Vegito's main ability is still like the best main ability in the game. <laughs> and That's how far ahead he was at his time. It, Holy crap, it's still amazing. It's getting to the point where no matter which one they pick, like only the really high value, like high value or the Zenkai itself will make the character extremely high value. Like those I think it has to be Super Saiyan 3 Goku. It did. It Whoa. has to be. Yeah, him. Wait, that's why I was thinking it, it gets bringing up the thing though. Frieza is the only one that's not going to be quadruple Zenkai boofed through the freaking roof. I mean, I guess Goku's the first green Saiyan, but yes, he's see? already on a team with all of that. Like you guys heard it. We're all on board. We've confirmed it. We're all cool <laughs> with Super Saiyan 3 Goku getting the Zenkai. Let's wait, do wait, it. The, the last, committee has voted. Oh, the last oh. sensible one left to pick before all the choices are characters that are already pretty ridiculous. It's going to be a full There you go. Goku the producer Saiyan agrees. Team. We're good. It's sealed. It's shipped. Send the, argue, send the letter. You could argue Goten is a little bit worse, but he would be joining no. a team that's already absurd. So it's just like, okay, which one? It's up, it's up in the air between Goten and Super Saiyan 3 Goku. But after that, what is it? It's Vegito, Frieza, the LF, Super Saiyan Blue, Vegeta. Like, Vegito Blue. Vegeta, well, yeah, he's a little bit newer, but like all the remaining Vegeta that they have to Zenkai are characters that are already kind of insanely OP, so they have to pick <laughs> one of them. Here's a question. What would be, what would be less oppressive? Zenkai Super Vegeta or Zenkai Maja Vegeta? Oh, yes, because we need another Blue Saiyan unit. Fantastic. Yeah. Come and join us. Okay. No, I was actually thinking if, if if there was diminishing turns or something to hold him back, then Maja Vegeta would actually be a really cool Zenkai because he, he kind of showed up and left the scene in the same week, it felt like. No, he's just kind of right. ran by people that like him. Well, it's because he came out and then Zenkai Gohan came out and people were like, Majin who? Yeah, <laughs> immediately got outclassed. But uh, I, I the, saddest, the saddest thing is probably realizing that uh, Gogeta Blue will probably see a Zenkai sooner than any of those guys because, like, he's just going to get that LF Piccolo treatment. Well, I mean, and that's that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? It could, it depends uh, on what they make of it, right? That's the thing. Because, I mean, had they made Kohan a little bit less, then you wouldn't be that much of a meme right now. Had they made other units stronger, you know, they would have been, you know, like Scouter Vegeta, for example, then he would potentially be in a Saiyan team and actually not just be bench. So I think that's, that's always the thing, right? It really depends on what they kind of make off the kit that is already there and how they improve it and how broken they're making them or not. Well, I just. I I prefer the next one to come out than not be on a Saiyan hybrid team. Fair. Okay, I think before uh, we're running out of time, we have one more topic, um, which is uh, we have already been teased with uh, the thousand days. People have already gotten their thousand days login. I know that Brad has it already. Um, so the thousand day celebration is supposed to come and start soon. Nas, what do you expect? And uh, maybe other than that, what are you hoping for? Oh, uh, well, okay. What I expect at the bare minimum is another campaign um, that maybe potentially will last until, like, I don't know when, when they actually plan to start it. I don't know if they'll wait until, like, the iOS hits its thousandth day or what. Because they announced it, we've passed the threshold, and we haven't seen anything yet. So it's either going to start really soon, or it's going to start, like, another month from now, closer to when the iOS, like, officially launched or something. Yeah, that's the one they're waiting for. Yeah, but I anticipate a campaign, login rewards, at the very minimum for an event or just some free gift of a thousand crystals. Um, we kind of touched on it before. There's a couple of like realistic expectations and unrealistic ones. Uh, I think for a thousand day players specifically, a realistic expectation would be a special customizable. Um, you know, cosmetic for Shallot in the same vein as how the uh, players who went to that Vegas tournament uniquely got like the varsity jacket or the winner, you know, uh, got the Hercule outfit. So I think that would be something very unique to give Thousand Day players. That's not something that would impact the actual meta of the game, like in PvP or anything. Something a little bit more realistic that they could also do would be people mentioned like zenkai the shop goku the blue spirit bomb one who ha has never been relevant like ever um 
I'm not super in line with that just because I don't think his animations, besides the spirit bomb itself, I don't think any of his other animations are really that great. So he's not, he doesn't really feel like a unique and special unit unless they go back and completely rework him like from the ground up, maybe turn him into like a weird type of legends limited unit or something, give him like a total upgrade. But you know, that or giving away like an actual thousand day Legends limited character, something like what Doken did. I'm not sure if they'll do that or not. Um, because the PvP nature of this game might be a little bit uh negatively impacted by it for all the people that are like, oh I, I don't have it and get demotivated. I don't know though. I would like to see a brand new Legends Limited Thousand Day character for the Thousand Day players. It doesn't have to be, like, an overpowered one either. It could be one that's just mostly for collection purposes. Like a little support King Kai unit or something ridiculous. But, I don't know. That's what I would like to see uh, versus what I think is going to happen, which is all the stuff I started with. In terms of the timing, um, just because this, this past week was basically nothing, but we got two new equips and that's it. I feel like this yeah. probably sh should be coming out this week, I would imagine. Do you think it's something that's going to last like all the way till May 5th or May 9th or whatever for like Goku Day or March? You mean, you mean, you mean March? Day yeah, not or... May. No, not, that will be three months. Yeah. Okay. Or will the Saiyan Day or whatever? Do you think it'll last into something bigger like that? Well, Probably, or... yeah. And so there could be a lot of big stuff that actually comes out. Like uh, they had this quiet period post. New Year's, and while Do Dokan's having its god dang sixth anniversary, so I would anticipate a lot of stuff is probably about to start happening, um, as they hopefully want to start 2021 off, you know, motivated and in high gear, so I would anticipate a good amount of stuff actually starting to happen soon. I don't know if Gresh wants to elaborate or anything, be like, yeah, no, because I can't imagine it's going to be quiet like this for too long of a period of time yo tom what do you think um they might introduce that new game uh, game mode they announced they maybe speci they specifically mentioned spring with that i don't know you know that's ready early i don't know if they would do that well, if it lasts until then you said like march oh, yeah, or yeah. April. Yeah. so if i could make a wish i would want them to rerun the legends limited uh, z power banner yes Well, no, it would be cool if if they introduced like uh you know how we have like multi Z power for just starring up. It'd be cool if they introduced like multi Zenkai power. You can earn it, you can throw it on any character that has a Zenkai kind of thing. That'd be cool. Do you think it would be color restricted or that it would be more liberal? Not sure how they would handle that, but just this idea that you can actually earn Zenkai. Maybe it's like a PvP reward or something like that. It's like, oh, this unit has a Zenkai, you are saved up a thousand, you can get him to Zenkai one for free kind of thing. I think that would be a natural next step as Zenkai start popping up like left, right, all over the place. And they can even yeah. differentiate it so like it doesn't apply for all the EX like event units or whatever. Like how you can't use the Z power on Shallot and stuff like that. But I think that's a good idea. I think that falls just in line with the Golden Eracers, like as just an overwhelming amount of more characters, more Zenkai, more equipment comes into the game. Like, not only do they power creep the characters, but they have to somewhat power creep the resources in the game to keep up with the demand and the quantity of stuff, right? I would imagine. Yeah. Most definitely. I don't even I don't even know what I want from the celebration. It's just maybe they'll introduce another way to farm certain resources or you know like uh, energy for example i think a lot of people are hurting for that but also i think that uh, like for me for example i'm reaching the ceiling slowly with uh, equips so of course i still need to clean my box a little bit but you know just getting more equip slots would be nice yeah or a way to Other condense than... them maybe like a an archive where you could send the ones that you hardly ever use so free up space for new ones or something like that yeah and I guess content. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's gotten to the point where they, like, besides new characters and Zenkais, they don't have much interesting to offer unless they do bring out a new game mode. 
Yeah, I mean the the thing is that if they really bring out the new game mode in like let's say a month or two, or two, then I think uh, I can kind of live with them focusing all their you know energy and time and resources on it. But it's gonna be hella dry, and they really need to find a way to keep the players in the game because otherwise they're just gonna leave before that new game mode drops and uh, or that game mode is really a big you know like a big bang super cool different kind of thing. But I am guessing they'll only find out once they release it. So that's another kind of double-edged sword right there. I'm just afraid that it's actually going to be a exclusive or Senkai unit that they're going to drop. Because not a lot of people have 1,000 days. And the uproar from the community, if that specific unit would be too good, would be insane. That's why I wanted to be like, really good in the collection sense but maybe not really yeah. good on the actual battlefield right kind of like i don't know how many people are legitimately angry that they didn't wish for the roshi and Ka uh, king kai titles on i am new year's right but but it's not makes you to the mad to the point where it affects your experience playing the game right it makes you like you may kick yourself a little bit and you're like dang i didn't wish for those they're really exclusive but it's a collection thing primarily right it's not a gameplay thing. So they could do that yeah. with a character where he's just like, I don't know. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Dokin, uh, Dokan did that with uh, this this one unit. I don't remember what it was, like a Bulma and some other characters on it, which you, you couldn't even use it in battle. It was just in your box. Or what about, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't Dokin also have like the 8-bit Vegeta and Goku also and stuff like that? That were just pure. Yeah, but you can use those actually, yeah. Yeah, those are April Fool's like cards. Yeah, but they're somewhat usable, but they're not. You're not beating the super battle road, no item stuff with truth. Like they're mostly for collection, right? They're actually pretty good. Like honestly, like they're you know, they're not like yeah, they're they're not like you're beating the hardest modes with them, but like they're actually not bad. That's I think that that's something that they should do. Like they should be somewhat usable, decent, but maybe not insanely OP. And yeah, the thousand day players, if you play the long game, everyone could get this for free. So it's not like there's anything other than time stopping anyone from getting it. So to reward the people that have put that time in seems like a nice touch for the developers to do. I just All want right. it because I'm really close to getting it, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it'll be a unit, though, for the reason that Tom brought up. It, imagine picking this game up a couple months ago and then the meta-defining unit or a team that you want to run is locked behind a thousand days. Well, I would I'm legitimately saying. want to put the game down. What if, well, what, wait, 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 what, what if they did this? What if it was a new Legends Limited banner that came out with a new unit, but people who logged in for a thousand days got one copy for free? I mean, that would be pretty amazing. But I think that would also spark a lot of... I don't know. It, it, you're getting one copy of a Legends Limited unit, and you're guaranteed to get a copy of it as the, the year rolled around. Well, yeah, I'm to sure. be fair, no matter what they do, the people that are nowhere near a thousand days are going to be salty. Like, there's, there's no way to circumnavigate that, because it's... Yeah. Like something that someone else has and they don't have it. Like just that existing period is going to inspire jealousy in a certain percentage of people. So you I think people be, you think people would be mad if the special one thousand day unit for people who logged in for a thousand days was Super Saiyan Four Gogeta. That would be so cool. I'd be <laughs> you had like you had to log in for a thousand days to get it, and there's no other way to get it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> people would be angry, but I don't care. I get it. I mean, like, <laughs> I earned it, though. Everyone else can earn it, too. Like, I don't want them to gate a reward behind people that didn't put the time in complaining about it. Like, that sucks. So hopefully it is something good. Something decent, at least. All right. With that said, um, we're going to go over to the break. And this week, we're going to try something different. So make sure you stick around. And uh, when we come back, we will take questions from chat. So... Uh, you know, stick around, get your questions ready, and we will pick at random whatever we see and we like. We'll just discuss. So, a little uh, bit more fluid discussion, yeah. Let's do it. We'll see you in three minutes. All right, hopefully, Brad will figure out his internet and come back by then, too, because he just disappeared. Uh oh. All right. He perfect we'll, vanished. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll be right back, y'all. Enjoy this uh, ad break and all that fun stuff.
and we're back. All right, welcome back. I hope you got those questions locked and loaded. And I will hand over the MC privilege to Gor Home uh, Goresh, I mean, of course. So uh, drop your questions in chat and Goresh will just pick one. Let's go. All right, guys in chat, post your questions. I will pick only the best questions. No pressure. Could we possibly get Super Saiyan Blue Shallot for a thousand days since we haven't gotten a new form for Shallot in a while? Asks V Lucius. I think that's a realistic possibility. But it, you'll know Super Saiyan Blue Shallot's coming when they start teasing stuff in the story about him getting like attaining a new power. So the more of that you start seeing in story mode, the more likely that it's on the horizon, right? I don't, I honestly, I don't think it might come that early just because they're probably running out of transformations and if anything i would prefer they focus on his base form getting better first because i mean if you use shallot and he has to transform for that what 10 timer counts the dude is just dead weight i would rather his base form be better first before they start throwing out new transformations what if he got an ultimate form like ultimate gohan where his base form was just like really good i would like that that sounds cool yeah I think they should also add a way for maybe very specific characters to have different ways of teaching them an ultimate arts technique also. Like a shallot that has an ultimate would be pretty neat, I think. He already learned yeah, cause, super moves. Well, yeah, because he can, what, what, would, so that, what would that mean? He could learn an ultimate or he, or he gets just like a base ultimate? No, he could learn. Like, obviously they restrict which character super moves like he can't learn lf namek goku's blue card right it's unteachable but <laughs> yeah he could do the same for certain ultimates like there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to learn the ultimate That's of the uh, red zenkai super saiyan goku like all it is is like a kick combo into a kamehameha like that's that could be teachable you know i wanted to learn yeah. the yamcha ultimate yeah that's a first different ones like you can literally teach him like Android 18's moves sometimes make him look like a girl, right? In some cases. So why not like, like give him some ults he can learn? Some of the more basic ones that aren't too like yeah. character story specific. Yeah, because imagine if you learn Topo's ult where he locks him the the Amer enemy's character for like three counts. That would uh -huh. be pretty powerful. And then you also have like a, a blue card that does something crazy. So yeah, you could make Shadow really OP. Yeah, just give him like a selection of ten characters whose ultimates are teachable to him. You know, go ahead. Right, well, I found a question that I really like. Are we good with this topic? Go for it. All right. So, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Jake A. Lega asks next unit to have a unique tap animation. Mm. Wait. Mm. I think that's for Profson. Well, I mean, I know we have the goat, Khan, and uh, he's kicking the crap out of you. I'm trying to think, like, who could have a different one? Could be Master no Roshi. Else lost the limb. Well, you also have, like, the girls' characters with the guns that have the tap when they pull out a gun and just fire one shot at you. That's pretty unique. Dude, too. Bunny Bunny Balma's tap attack with that is so confusing and funny because a launch, despite using the same submachine gun, does not do that. She just hits you. And yet Bunny Balm was just like, instead of automatic fire, it's just like one single shot. Very confusing tap attack. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I saw someone in chat say uh, the Jiren with this glare. It would be hilariously confusing if he just kind of floated up to you and started tapping <laughs> you without moving. <laughs> I want a new kind of unit in the game that's like true support and what i mean by that is a character like the grand priest or king kai or a, a character that has no functional battle use but you bring them because of the absurd amount of buffs they might dish out to the team right like while they're alive so having a tap attack like that where it comes out and it you tap and maybe it restores like twenty thousand health to your other teammates like a Dende unit, right? You come out, I don't know. They could they could do some type of some crazy stuff with that if they came out with like non-combat characters that you bring to combat for actual support effects. Because pretty much all the characters that are classified as support in this game, they're all just combat support. Like they're not actually true supports like you'd imagine from, you know, another game where there's like 
you know, Overwatch and you have Mercy and she's just there healing and not really fighting anybody, right? You know. So a more actual hard support role, new characters, all different types of animations and possibilities. Heroes actually didn't have a dedicated support role in their game until like six years in and then they added one. So yeah, we could see that. We could see Frieza whacking you with his tail. Yeah. I mean if it's not <laughs> was it Prof, wasn't it you that requested the system of like an equipable character that you could like call out once per battle that'll like do an instant transmission or heal you like a Dende support or something. Yeah, something like if that. if we could get like a, a what do you call it a seventh unit slot that's just not the ability that's not enhancing the stats of your team because that would get annoying having to summon for specific ones. I, if they had like unique abilities tied to these units and you'd have them on the main banners, it'd just be a, a utility unit, but. <laughs> It'd be fun, in my opinion. The best way to compare that, the thing to compare it to, would be that new support memory thing in, in Doken, right? Where you get the little animation play of a character and it buffs your team up. I can you hesitate that. now when you say that. Yeah, I'm going to make sure I'm saying it right. Wait, wait, wait. Is it not Doken? It's Dokan. Doken. <laughs> oh. I, I heard this song, they go Doken, do, what? something like that. It's like It's like Han as in Gohan. Oh well. All right, I got a new, I got another question. Shoot. Pariah five hundred seven asks, "What quality of life and healthy changes do you think the game needs to keep afloat? I.e., little updates to shops, auto sell, condense all the shops into like less amount of bigger shops. Like, like I said, like with the equipment medals, like move erasers there, move." whatever uh, some of the awakened memories or some of the resources you need for awakening equipment. It's like move all of the equipment related stuff to one big equipment shop and consolidate it. So you don't have to go to the rush metal shop to get the memories and like three other shops to get everything you need. I don't know. That would, that would help me out. And then uh, biggest quality of life thing also is rematch for raids. Like if you're playing with your Come friend, on. like I know why there's not a rematch button because they want to keep the general pool. That, what? I can barely hear you. Because of auto, because of auto clicker, I think. Well, maybe just... that, but not even so much that as they want the population of the general queue to have people in it. So that random... Because uh, more people in this game are playing just solo by themselves than the amount of people that are playing with friends and clans and stuff, right? So you could tell a lot of the decisions they make are trying to keep the general populations populated right so i think that's why there's no rematch button so here's a, here, here's a change i would love you know how when you, you get to your total results screen if you could then tap the items in that screen or have them be selected audibly and just sell them right there keep going yeah, yeah. one thing i would also like what i noticed what's really annoying is when you buy equips from the metal shop and you go then to check your equips then you sell all of them, and then you have to go back to the shop. I would like to streamline this process somehow, so I don't have to go like you know, like saying. five menu buttons. It's like uh, for you, I think you said it's skipping on events, right? Well, I mean, so there's there's if you're actually going for like ZNC Plus, you end up picking up thirty of these items at a time. Over it used to yeah. be like ten, but you can pick up thirty over and over again. You buy end up buying like a hundred, hundred and fifty of them. You go and you sell everything that is in a gold slot, and you rinse repeat, right? And that takes a long time. So if they just had in the item section alone something that automatically selected and you could pick a greater or lower, and so you pick D, right? And so all your D items are immediately sold for you, rinse, repeat. You, it would make item farming done in an afternoon. You know, you'd have full Zs as long as you had all the material for it. Yeah, or if you could click them and sell them from the results screen. Like yeah, that. the results screen automatically ditch your trash. Oh. Yeah, because then you wouldn't even have to go back to the equips, you know, Green and then go back to where you farm the equipment. Or you could like set it before you do the skip. That would auction this. They could just go more into the skip menu, right? That if an item D greater or high, lower drops, just automatically sell it and then you get Zinni on the results screen. Yeah, just saying, okay, keep, keep only C or maybe even keep only red slots, something like this. One of the biggest quality of life things I would like to see as well is something like, well, it's not something. I want to see a ping meter for all the players in pvp like i want to see if it's my fault if the match is laggy or if it's the other person like they don't have to like let me choose like if i want to fight the person or whatever i would like that too like based on the connection but just having some type of ping on display so i can know i'm not losing my mind because i know there'd be people on twitter 
that have replied to like sent me messages like why'd you send me the good party and i'm like because that match was laggy as hell and i don't know if it's your fault or the game's fault or whose fault it is and i was salty about it i'm just gonna be honest yeah. so having some type of any type of visual representation of like frame loss ping like any of that would be helpful on screen i want to yep. see an, uh, a thing where you could sell adventures or just delete adventures yes please yes, yes. Or, or hear me out have them be stackable as a resource like anything else in the game so you might have a hideous amount of them but you just don't care because it'll expire eventually or they'll just sit there until you need them because there's been times where I have like Zenkai adventures or even just like the like the quest adventures up there and I literally don't want to play PvP because I don't want to override them. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, so it's annoying. Yeah. It's the yeah. same for me with the one hour adventures and then you just get the three hour and the regular adventures from PvP. I, just, I, I hate it. If like if you stream, you know, like like prof and I stream like you know multiple hours, you override all of them. Well, if if they just like removed I, i'm sure they do it for a reason so you don't farm immediately and then just do adventures for the rest of the season or something but if they took the time limit off and just made them disappear when they disappear and then they just kind of fill up then it, it'd fix it right then and there because right now it's it's even annoying when you open up your adventure list and you go oh, there's my seven hours here's my three hours oh there's the ones like that's the nothing about like they have already made huge strides in adventures. We used to have to hand select the mission and the units over and over and over. Now you just hit auto repeat, auto repeat, and then auto dispatch, right? But yeah. uh, it, 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 one more quality of life step, you know, is just get rid of that fear. Like I lose my weekend adventure constantly because I just open up my PvP, don't think about it, it's gone. And so, all right, I have um, there's a question from one guy, but it's sort of like plays into another question that somebody asked. So the first question is from Pops YouTube. Uh, no, no, sorry. Sorry, wrong person. Sorry. Uh, SX Even 7. How do you feel about how they handled the Try to Surpass Me event? And then that is going to play into... Oh, boy. Let's see if I can remember where this was. And then, yeah. Actually, no, same guy. Okay. Oh, <laughs> same guy. Uh, and then how do you... What do you think the uh, ticket is going to be that we get from that event? How do I think um, they handled the event? I mean, yeah. How do I think I hand, they handled handled of... the event? And then how? And then like, what do you think that the ticket is going to like give us? I don't know. I mean, if you got the new units, the event is easy as pie, you know. And if you you float step and cheese the AI, it's no problem. But you can also run with I don't know LOE or whatever crit team. I don't think it was that hard, to be honest. And yeah, I hope that there's something valuable. But maybe it's just like a higher chance at a new unit or something. For a thousand days. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I didn't think the event was bad either. But like uh, Palm said, you can sort of cheese the AI. Uh, I can't. I don't think any of us can really judge what this ticket does or whether it was really worth the pain of doing the event because this is the first time they've ever done anything like this. Depending on what the outcome is, it could be one hundred percent worth the effort to go through in the event, or it could be nothing really. Yeah, I would assume it's going to be a guaranteed sparking ticket, and then I'll end up pulling, like, Captain Ginyu or something like that. Be like, oh, you mean Raditz? Yeah, Raditz. Yeah, that, yeah. That too. I would take Captain Ginyu. <laughs> just be like, oh. Me, personally, I, I don't like the challenges. Like, I don't want to go back in the same mission for three times to get all the challenges. Rather do more events and new opponents than doing the same stage over and over. Yeah. That's my two cents. Yeah, 100% agree. A thousand percent agree. It's so annoying. It's, it's the thing for them is it's going to 100. They're, it's difficult for them for sure because PvE content can get very stale very easily. Like on the one hand, you want people that like give me something new to do for CC. They release something that has some challenges, but people will be like, I don't, you know, I want it just to be super easy challenges. I don't want to have to go through that. But it's like, if they're super easy to do, you'll steamroll it, nothing to do. And I, I, you know what I mean? Like there's there's a trade-off to either or. They want to give something to do, but at the same time, people are not susceptible welcome to it because they're like, oh, I don't like doing I want to do something, but not like that do something. I want to do something where it's like I just click and auto and whatever, you know? Something that's less repetitive, like or I don't know. Yeah. Something that's more engaging. I I like it when it says beaten this many timer counts. And I'm like, all right, go. Yeah, that's that's acceptable. 
but not like beat it with three hero characters. Beat it with two hero characters. Beat it with nine EX characters. Beat it with only one character that's a hero and an EX at the same time. It's like, what? And stop! I don't want to do that. It's the same stage over and over again under different conditions, but all of them are easy and just time consuming. I, I don't like that. that. That type of stuff drives me nuts. Hmm. Any other right. questions you guys have in chat? I think I'll do like yeah, one I more. Time for one more, I guess. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, I saw, so I don't remember who, but someone had a question in the spirit of like, what do we want to see from this new game mode? Like, if we had some level of control, what would we, what would we do? New game mode, dude. That's like an impossible to answer. Oh, like Give me a tower defense easy. game mode. I just, yes, <laughs> that'd be same. great. I just drop UI Goku, and then there's a bunch of Cybermen coming, and he just sh <laughs> shoots key blasts at him. I don't care. I'll take it. Plant versus zombies, but it's just all your legends characters. Dude, that would be so funny. It just should be playing a little differently than like. I want I want the the battlefield mode of Dokkan Two Legends, so it has to play in like a different way. So tower defense would be really cool. But even boss rush would already be a start. Yeah, and not like the way that the rush mode is done right now. That's not like boss rush. That's so like, they they could yeah. have like raid battles. Where I was, I've talked about it before. They could have scripted fights, right? And uh, imagine if you had all four of your cards, kind of like a rising rush, and they were always there. Your card draw speed would still refill your hand, and it wasn't about just burning a hundred key and hitting the boss over and over again like you're, you're versus a freaking azaru monkey or something and it tries to punch you so you have to use rage drunks or something your buddy covers and you're constantly thinking about these moments okay he, we have shield down now i can go eight mode and keep hitting him like if, if they actually had it to where the, the boss would beat you and you had to you know use maybe the green super saiyan 3 goku to it out of something that would otherwise be a one-shot kill i mean i i want to see stuff like that come to the game and i'm hoping that's where they're going with this pve mode where it's a more of a scripted fight. They have no else that way to describe it. But you know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, at this stage of the fight, the boss starts doing this attack, and so this is the tactic you have to do to get around it, right? Rather than you tap four cards, wait, wait, and rinse repeat. You know, like a like an instance boss in an MMO has phases and stuff. Exactly. Like that. That's that's how co-op should have been done, in my opinion. And I feel like that's where they could go with it. Like every ten seconds, you know, the boss is gonna shoot like a beam, so you have to save your vanish maybe get hit by a few blast arts to know that you have your vanish available for those scripted attacks right yeah exactly like okay oh crap it's coming right and then uh, you could even be calm with your friends like i need you to cover this right that could be kind of neat they could even put like a countdown timer on the screen like boss will nuke in 10 9 8 and you'd be like oh shit i gotta make sure i play around this mechanic type thing yeah that, that's otherwise no matter what they do because if it if it's just the characters are representative of themselves and they take the kits and stats completely away from them, then you just have a new game within Legends, right? If they have the characters using their abilities at all, it's going to be within somewhat of the same kind of combat system we have currently. And I don't know how you deviate much more from co-op or PvP other than doing something to where the the way you achieve cards in your hand and their use is completely different. I say. I want uh, I want a Legends Hearthstone Battler in the game, and it wouldn't it would require a lot of work on the UI for like setting up the battles, but they could just translate the actual card art and the main the the main stats into the numbers for all the cards, and just base all that off the stats that are already in the game, and just translate it all to a card battler, and let us use our cards in a completely different way, kind of like how Pom Pom was saying. And now I'm now he went silent. Is there like a Dokkan mode where it uses like your entire box or a lot of your units and like an auto battle an auto battle horde mode kind of deal? Yeah, it's it like was. um it's called battle it's called Battlefield or Ultimate Clash, depending on what version you play. But yeah, it's, it's like you, you pick hundred and hundred and twelve units. Uh and then you go through like I think it's how many fights is it? Is it like hmm. nine or ten? Except and um I don't remember. Like, yeah, I think 10. it's like five or ten, or sorry, nine or ten. And then you um, basically have to. You can only use each unit once, and that's it. That's it's pretty kind cool. Kind of like the ch challenge rush or the rush modes. 
Well, the rush mode is broken up into a bunch of fights. Isn't the Doken thing like all at once, or is it a no? It's a different thing. Oh, it it's is? actually okay. very similar to uh, Rush, but it's obviously and before better. I'm not I'm not saying your new ideas are bad, but before you ask for that, remember how long it used to take Rush before they reworked it? Do you really want to have to sit there for Jesus. three hours straight just fighting a progression of Legends PVE fights? That, that is what um, it is already. Like if it well, I'm talking about an un- uninterrupted three hours, and if you interrupt it, you lose and have to start over like for th- three hours straight. Like screw that. Well, if it was a true endurance fight, and I'm setting up a team to see how long I can fight Broly before he gets too crazy. Okay, if it's an that, endless that sounds, mode, and you know that, that you're fun. going into that in like an endless mode and trying to see how far you can get in endless mode, well, then yeah, three hours is like a goal to hit, right? Then it becomes yeah. like an achievement. But if it's actually like, oh, it takes three hours to beat this mode, and if you lose, ah, you got to start over. No, that's. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that no matter what they do for PVE in this game. As long as it's using the same, you know, traditional battle system that we've had since this entire game has been out, it's always going to be boring because the AI sucks in this game. I think so. That's why I think this new, I guess, sort of system or game mode that they're talking about or teasing is actually pretty interesting because it's not supposed to be that way, and that really gives players, I guess, and me, a sense of okay, this actually could be fun. Whereas if it was just the same system, then we knew we would know already going into it that it would just be boring. Well, isn't there supposed to be a, a car driving event we're getting soon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you dare bring that up. Yes. Go I mean, go kart. Need a way to experience the game. We get to play, you know, some Sonic Racer right here. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. You get to play Goku or Piccolo. You need to make your driving license. Uh, instead of <laughs> summoning, we're actually going to go out and throw like Pokeballs at the characters, and that's how we're. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Dragon Ball Go. Let's let's do it. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, I'll, at a... least at least we would get some steps in every day, huh? Yeah. I would play that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we go around collecting a bunch of characters. The only thing that would spawn around my house would be a bunch of Cybermen though, so I'd be pissed and I'd quit. Maybe sh- shiny Cybermen though. Like the golden one from the from the XP battle or something. <laughs> yeah. Be like your house has Cybermen around and one Chatsu, and I'd be like, "Fuck this!" I'm out. <laughs> and then they're just blowing you up. Yikes! <laughs> All right, I would say we wrap it up over here. So that's it for this week. Again, uh, thanks everybody for showing up. Make sure to check out our link tree. Follow us on all our different social media. And this podcast will premiere in about 24 hours on YouTube. Uh, Nas, do we have anything in store for tonight, stream-wise, or in the afternoon? Uh, I believe so. I don't know if anyone's going to casually play something and comment along with the Super Bowl or not. but Because, you know, it's foosball night. But uh, on the schedule, we just Troco have uh, Troco playing Rust uh, at 4 p.m., some Genshin at 7 p.m., and then I reserved a block for myself at 10 p.m., at any point in time, Truth or whoever else wants to do something and comment along. When does the Super Bowl even start? I don't even know. I'm not I'm like six thirty or so. On that, that's Eastern time. Okay. Our yeah, time. Eastern time. Okay, so that would be like right before the Genshin stream. So I don't know if the Genshin guys are gonna want to forgo their stream for like a Super Bowl reaction thing or not. But either way, there's like three things on the schedule. So expect to at the very minimum see Troco, Genshin, and myself or Truth, Nate. Uh, this evening so yeah we'll be here for y'all keep you company all right sounds good and with that said uh we hope that we all see you again here a week from now with episode 21 of our dragon ball legends podcast maybe with more topics we'll see but uh yeah i guess we'll find out uh on wednesday at the latest until then have a good rest of your week stay safe and we'll see you all on sunday a week from now bye everybody peace out everyone bye 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 thanks for coming We'll